Uh, it's 7.03 p.m. Uh, May 13th, uh, 2024. I'll call the uh, meeting of the school, Milton School Building Committee to order. Uh, as typical to roll call uh, vote, uh, Scott Tereshack. Present. Uh, Carrie Hurley. Present. Uh, Dr. S Selena Miranda. Present. Mark Loring. Present. And Sean O'Rourke. Present. Uh, we got a quorum. Um, sorry, a couple others still getting moved in. Um, so first thing, uh, second thing on the agenda is citizen speak. Uh, we reserve the first uh, 15 minutes of the meeting uh, for citizen speak. So if you're here to speak, uh, we ask that you raise your hand or if you're in person, uh, please come up. Uh, when you do speak, we ask that you state your name and your address and please let me hear a commentary to three minutes. Uh, so first hand I see is uh, Pete Jackson. Uh, Pete, take it away. Good evening. Can you hear me? Uh, one second. I just got to switch the audio, Pete, just to, over to our uh, owl. Try that again. Can you hear me now? Nope. Sorry about mm. that. Yeah, it's coming off here. There's a button on the side with volume. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. But that red, that red pulsating yep. bar is not good. <laughs> really? <laughs> let me see. Let me see if I just run it through. Try it, try it again, Pete. I'll run it through my laptop. I'll see if that works fine. One more time. There we go. I, we can hear you. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to speak again. Um, yeah. I had two it, comments it, that it, I wanted to make. Yeah. Um, sorry, Pete. Pete, if you could just name an address for the record. Uh, Peter Jackson, uh, 14 Capon Street. Perfect. Um, Thanks. There, there were two things that I wanted to comment on. Um, the first is the appraisal. Um, I don't know who on the team was managing the appraisal contract or, or how that was done, um, but the appraisal submitted uh, doesn't re reflect in any way the terms of the contract uh, for the appraisal, uh, primarily the uh, standards that the state has for for appraisals. Um, so, I, you know, I think that's a big problem. I did submit, and, and I know, um, Sean, at least you got copies and others um, comments uh, to EEA um, about the shortcomings of the appraisal, identifying 19 different items uh, that, you know, didn't meet the specification requirements for the appraisal. So just to bring that up. Um, the second thing I wanted to comment on is the uh, proposed um, replacement land identified for the park department. The, um, the, the, the land um, on the access road that's proposed to be the replacement for the park department, um, you're, you're proposing to convert 4.4 um, acres or something like that uh, 4.45 acres of parkland um, for the school, and you're replacing it with two parcels on the access road that total 4.86 acres. Um, that land is totally undevelopable for recreational purposes and doesn't make sense. Um, I did go out there uh, with representatives of the park department and the park board, and we looked at the land, and, and I, I sent them a letter um, along with uh, some some photos of the land there. I mean, there's trash cars, there's buried things, there's obvious pollution and sedimentation. It just is not developable as uh, parkland. Um, so I, um, as I said in my letter, um, that I, you know, I'm going to encourage the board to come back and try to work with you to identify a more equitable I uh, exchange for the parkland part of this project. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Thanks, Pete. Uh, anybody else for citizen speak? And if so, please, oh, one gentleman in the waiting area, just bring him in, just double check. So just allow him to connect the audio and then, yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're, 
So just seeing, uh, we're in the sec uh, the agenda item for citizen speaks. So if anybody else uh, wishes to speak, please raise your hand uh, by doing so on Zoom, and we can call on you. And if not, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. And seeing none. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, item three, approval of past meeting minutes, Monday, April 8th, 2024. Assuming the packets, everybody got, uh, we got copies of the meeting minutes that PMA had put together for us. Uh, just see if there's any comments, edits, suggestions. No comments, no edits. Any motions? I think to approve the minutes of April. Okay. I'll second. Selena. All right. So, Scott, any further discussion? Assume none. All right. Um, we are all in person, so we can just. Tim. Uh, is Tim remote? I apologize. I will, be, I will be in person in the next couple minutes. No, that's fine, Tim. We just got to do a roll call vote for it. That's all. Easy and quick. Uh, all right. So roll call vote. Scott Tereshek. I was not present, so I'll abstain. I'm staying. Gary Hurley. Uh, yes. Uh, Dr. Miranda. I was not present, so I'll abstain as well. All right. Mark. Yes. Uh, Tim Lombard. Yes. And Sean O'Rourke. Yes. So, all right. Item four, the agenda. Uh, old business. So item 4A is discussion update on land swap. Uh, so the the land swap is still progressing through the Senate right now. It's due. It's gone through two readings. It's due for a third reading. Uh, so I had a discussion with uh, Senator Timothy's chief of staff last week uh, just to get an update on it. Uh, they're awaiting a third reading. The hard thing is um, there's, there's no definitive time that it happens. So they're, they're working on it right now. I made them aware that, you know, for us, it's time sensitive and we'd like to get it done, you know, obviously as soon as possible. The process by which after it goes through this reading, um, it would then go to the house. The house would then basically do three readings. And then it, as it gets engrossed, I would then go up to the, to the uh, governor's desk for a signature. Um, so up till this point, we haven't heard anything uh, about it. There's obviously the letters that have been written as was referenced in the citizen speak um, that's there. So um, open it up. Any questions, comments, anything? Anybody has any, anything about? So the, the one that I would offer is uh, for the letter that was drafted, there was one uh, by Mr. Jackson and there was one by uh, Legier who I think were the lawyers that I think should be rebutted at some point with some factual information that we have. Um, so, you know, basically for myself, I'd like to see from the committee if there is a willingness to basically, you know, respond to some of these letters so that, you know, we're on record for our position on them too. So open that up for any commentary. That's actually, you know, if there's anything we could do to help promote it. So I guess we can answer that. Yeah. I mean, a, as a committee, we can basically draft a letter, you know, that, that, you know, we can distribute kind of work on for the next meeting and, you know, have that as, you know, our formal response to the letters that we've received. You know, at this point we haven't said anything. Uh, so I think having a letter like that, that kind of summarizes our position, basically fortifying the alternative analysis and stuff that we did would be, would be helpful. So people are in favor of that. We can start working on that. All right. Um, so, yeah, that's item 4A. Uh, item 4B, old business, review and approve project invoices. Uh, our friends at PMA like to get paid, so we want to make sure we pay them. Uh, we know previously we, we approved previous invoices for them. Uh, so in the package you guys received, you should have March 2024's invoice from PMA. So once again, just look to see if there's any uh, comment, suggestions, and if none, I'd entertain any motions. Make a motion to approve the PMA invoices for March 2024 and April 2024. Second. Second by Dr. Moran. All right, and assume no discussion. All right, now we'll go to a roll call vote. Uh, Scott Tereshek? 
Yes. Uh, Carrie Hurley? Yes. Uh, Dr. Miranda? Yes. Mark Loring? Yes. Tim Lombard? Yes. And Sean O'Rourke? Yes. All right. Perfect. Uh, item five, mo marching right along through the agenda. Uh, new business discussion, update, educational vis visioning process. So uh, with us tonight here uh, is Superintendent Burroughs. And from Arrow Street, we have uh, Larry Spang, Shanali, and uh, uh, Mike Pirelli. Sorry. Pirelli. Sorry. No worries. I'm horrible with the news. Um, but essentially what it is is to you know give them the floor for a little bit to kind of talk about uh, what they've been doing for the past couple of months in regards to educational visioning. Uh, as I mentioned um, at my presentation at town, town meeting last week, and, um, um, you know, I, I, I sat in on one of these sessions up at the Pierce with PMA. It was, you know, cool to see, you know, the, the whole district kind of coming together, you know, getting behind this, doing some work on this, you know, outside of the work that we've been doing for five years. Um, so kind of with that, I'll open it up to you guys and take it away. So yes, sir. Street has a um, PowerPoint, um, mm -hmm. I can share my screen and then do you want to just run it so you can click through? Um, do you want me to click through or do you want to I can, well, you have slides as well, right? Yeah. After yours, they're in the same deck. Yeah. So you can yeah. do it if you want. Um, so I'll share my screen and I'll come out. Mm -hmm. Do we have a sh down. bigger shared screen? Okay. So I'll come, I'll, come, I'll, come, I'll come sit next to you then. So what we can do is just kind of share a laptop so everybody can see. Okay. That might have an HDMI map. I have to. for it real quick before we start. Yeah. I also uh, brought a USB stick if we can plug it right in. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I have to be promoted. To yep. Two. Co-host. I can really grab it. Ah. Yep. Well, well, he's going to he's going to share on his screen oh. through Zoom, so everybody out there can see it, so we can all see it now. I can see my phone. S three. Um. So I should be sharing my screen now. Can everyone see that? Yep. Presentation. Great. Um, so we'll let Shanali kind of run the chat and then I can. Um, <laughs> yeah, we just. <laughs> but I think. Well, we, we have one. Yeah. yeah. And if we don't, we just bring her right up to the table. That's fine, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, essentially because. Seamus's screen is being displayed. We can point to things using his mouse, and that way everybody can see. Yeah. Oh. Okay. yeah, I think. I think. So, guys, guys, yeah. I, I, I hold on, Seamus. Peter, let's grab a seat. Yeah, just that's a meeting. I'll, I'll yeah. get here early. So, yeah. So what what happens is if if you want to excuse me, Miss, if, if you want to come up to the table to see better, feel free. Please please come right up. Yeah, you can see. So essentially, everybody at the everybody at the table will be able to see through yes. their laptop. Everybody online can see through their their own screen that's there. Right. Yeah, please come on up. Thank you. Yep. No, okay. just keep the lights. Okay. We're good. Okay. Are we ready to? We are good. Okay. So, ready? Yeah, let's do it. Well, I can just talk through the planned agenda really quickly. So, Mike's going to discuss um, 
uh, give us a brief summary of what's happened at the last couple of workshops. And then Larry and I are going to just review where we are with the schedule. And then um, we put together a larger, more detailed look ahead of what's going to happen in the next couple of uh, weeks. And then, you know, the goals for this conversation are to review the next series of milestones for both the visioning sessions and what the um, immediate milestones are for the schedule and where we're going to need your support um, to reach those milestones. And then, of course, we'll discuss the next steps. So we um, are ongoing through the process of visioning and programming. So far, we've had um, three visioning workshops with a collection of about 20 staff members, ranging from administrators, classroom teachers, um, special educators, all the way from pre-K, um, including high school. Um, we spent a full day shadowing um, teachers and students at the elementary levels to see what pre-K was like, spent some time at the middle school as well, and then followed that up with having an initial listening session where we identified overall um, goals and priorities. We also have gone to see two middle schools so far, uh, the Gates Middle School in Situate and the Chapman Middle School in Weymouth to see what's out there in terms of teaching and learning and, and new buildings. We're gonna be going in a couple of weeks to go see two early childhood um, programs as well, to then start to focus more on early childhood as well. So um, for those of you that were involved in the interviews, you've seen this graphic before, and I always start with this in the visioning sessions, just to bring us back to the understanding that the educational that vision that we're helping to create with Milton involves all of these components because these are all interrelated pieces and parts of education. So we started talking about the learner, child development, we talked about pre-K, we talked about middle school. Even though this is a seventh and eighth grade pre-K project, we also talked about what are fifth and sixth graders like, knowing that fifth grade comes into the lower middle school. So we make sure that that dynamic is supported as well. Then we moved on to focusing on teaching and learning, and then we tie in the learning environment because all four of those things have to work in alignment. So there were pieces and parts of each of those during the visioning sessions. So some of the outcomes. So in the initial listening session we had, um, mostly with leadership, we did a prioritization exercise where we asked um, a series of questions. What matters most to you? What's a successful project? Um, what's at the heart of the project? What is what about middle school matters most? What about pre-K matters most? A number of questions like that. And we organize and categorize those post notes into these overarching goals and priorities. So one is um, spaces, design features, and programs to optimize learning, to make sure we support inclusion of all students, um, to support team and collaboration and community and developmental needs. So finding opportunities and space mm -hmm. throughout the building to support a team together, a whole grade level together, a whole school community together. Opportunities for pre-K and middle school and high school to mix together um, and have those collaborative moments. Space for professional development, spaces to support families and community, um, enhancing technology use and safety, and then supporting modern approaches to teaching and learning. So we started to dig deeper into those and the first session really focused on um, teaching and learning and student experience. It was a five hour session, um, really started with looking at child development and then teaching and learning. And so these are some of the outcomes that came from that. We asked participants, if you were to build this school from scratch, what are you bringing with you? What are you adding to this new program? What does that ideal program look like? And so you can see these are some of the outcomes. So hands-on experiential, really student-led and project-based active learning. Um, having more of a team-based model at the lower middle school and still having a team-based model at the upper middle school, but having some fluidity there and allowing for growth over time, um, things to change content-wise over time. We talked about what is that collaboration with pre-K look like for middle school students? What does it look like for high school students as well, knowing that they're all going to be on the same campus now and talking about synergies and what we could do uh, with those connections. Um, talked about varieties of PE opportunities. So it's not just going to gym class anymore, but maybe it's also doing some type of yoga or dance or alternative forms of PE. So that way you really meet kids where they are. Um, we talked about more sensory opportunities like 
yes, you can have a large cafeteria, but are there other opportunities for kids that maybe it's a sensory overload? Maybe they kind of want to dip their toe into the cafeteria. You know, could we have quieter spaces like that for lunch, lunch groups and things like that? And lots of indoor, outdoor opportunities, really bringing inside out and outside in. Then we started talking about the learning environment specifically. And again, here are some of the outcomes. What we did is we asked participants a series of four or five questions, each diving into a very specific um, area of focus, knowing that this is going to be a shift in grade configuration. And so the learning environment focused on the seven and eight building, but it also did focus on what would happen in the five, six building, even if you left it just as is, mm -hmm. how do we make sure we're supporting those fifth graders moving in? So you can see here, ideally flexible seating, opportunities for flexible furniture, flexible spaces. So that way, if enrollment changes over time, if teaching and learning changes over time, which we all know it does, it's gonna change from now that we did the visioning when the building opens, education is going to be different. So how do we make sure we have that built-in flexibility over time? Um, opportunities for collaboration space for teams for whole grade level. Um, inclusive and innovative special education rooms. Really bringing special education rooms, making sure that they're dedicated for programs, but that they're also embedded with general education classes so that, again, over time, those special ed rooms, maybe they become classrooms and the kids are as included with their peers as much as possible. Um, teacher collaboration space, giving them dedicated professional space so that they really can have professional meetings, run data team meetings, and really just collaborate and have that time to plan that they don't necessarily do now. Um, I touched on the lower middle school, upper middle school, having this teaming kind of structure, but now space to support that. So having a collection of classrooms, and small group spaces attached to that and additional spill out spaces with all in the same general area. So that way over time within the same day or same academic period, you can move from space to space to space in a moment's notice and, and change the activity or the environment. We then asked um, in the final session participants to start to um, vote on some design features that if we took you on a tour of schools worldwide, what they would see. And so we brought it to them. We brought them pictures of Gates Middle School that we toured in Chapman and schools all over the country. Um, and these are the features that they voted for as their top choices. So when you look at academic organization, this idea of academic spilling, meaning you can open up a garage door or a sliding door and literally spill out instead of just kids laying on the hallway, which they're doing in the middle school now. Purposeful space so you can spill out from the classroom into this general area and work with kids from another class or work with a support professional and a group of students, but giving that flexibility. Having small group and embedded intervention, meaning between pairs of classes, having small rooms where you can fit 100 and or four to five kids in a 150 square foot space. So again, you can spill out, but it's acoustically separate. So that way, if you're doing more testing or really supportive intervention, you can do so there. Um, teacher planning space, I already identified. Looking at media and STEM, STEAM, we talked about what is the future of media in the library? What's interesting is the middle school library has already kind of parceled out and so, the library isn't just a place for books anymore. There's so many different things happening there. So what is that future? In both schools that we went and toured, one school had a completely dispersed library, meaning books were all over the school, and another school had a traditional library where it was in one location. So we talked about the pros and the cons of that, and the group kind of found a middle ground of, you know, yes, let's have it in one central location, but let's embed it academically so the books and the resources are really as close to kids as possible. And let's start to think about how do we blur the boundary between where a library starts and where these learning communities start or end, and vice versa. So that's an ongoing conversation. And then we talked a lot about, you know, meeting kids where they are socially, emotionally, mentally, not just pre-K, but the middle school as well. And so we talked about how do we support voice and choice 
and universal design for learning, not just through furniture types, but spaces as well. So how do we embed spaces throughout the building where kids can, you know, just kind of take a breath throughout the day? Or um, we talked about things that kids can manipulate along the walls or sensory pads that are on the floor that traditionally used to be for students, you know, needing it in their IP because they're in special education. But in reality, it could become a universal experience for kids to just kind of take that mental break. Again, we talked about indoor outdoor. Um, really, how do we build this sense of belonging and use the building to really support that? So we're working towards that. And then again, as I touched on before, having lots of varieties of physical wellness spaces. So, you know, is there a cardio fitness room adjacent to the gym? So kids can have a totally different experience instead of just being in the gymnasium. So next steps, as I mentioned, um, we are going to go on those early childhood tours. That's on May 24th, um, May 16th. So on Thursday, we're going to have a three hour session focused just on pre-K programming and um, the educational program development. So what we've recommended the district do is create an educational program document. That's a requirement when you're a part of the MSBA process, not that you are, but that document is a powerful um, document that could be used for this project as well, because it details and outlines every piece and part of what your educational program is and the reasoning and justification for it. So that way, when you communicate to the community, this is why we're building the building we're building, or whether when you communicate it to other educators in the district, everybody has this unifying vision. So it's almost like the project charter. And so that's something that has started in process now um, that the um, principal of the middle school is taking the lead on. And in addition to that, something that's not on this list is um, I've also sent out a questionnaire to um, early childhood and to middle school to start to focus on very intricate pieces and parts of educational program so that when we can start doing some design development while the full educational program is being documented. That was a lot of information that I just spewed at you. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. And I can go back to any slide if you want to refer to it. So can you talk a little about like the reasons for doing that and how it basically drives the program for the school, like spaces and stuff like that too? How? Because I think- for doing the educational program, Dr. Uh, yeah, just the visioning stuff that you've been doing and basically how that's going to relate to like floor plans, mm -hmm. the layout of the building, how yeah. it functions and Absolutely. stuff. Yeah. So I'll use a really specific example. So the last time we were together with this core group of um, stakeholders, it was a three hour programming session where we asked questions about academic organization, special education, um, social emotional aspects. And so when we talked about academic organization, we said as a group, ideally, educationally, how do you believe classrooms can be organized so that way we can support your idea of still having teams, but also allowing those teams to kind of be fluid so that way maybe you have four main content teachers, but maybe kids in a seventh grade may see a few teachers from this team and a few teachers from that team. And there's just, there's opportunities for crossover. So we had a pretty in-depth conversation about like what that looks like. That educational belief then impacts what the building looks like because it helps the architects understand, okay, let's create this collection of classrooms with small group spaces and breakout spaces, but let's put them next to each other. So that way there's easy flow between different teams versus, you know, when you look out in the hallway here, it's a long hallway and just classrooms on each side of the hallway. So the goal of the visioning sessions is not just, Yes, it's to think globally and all and big, like ideally, what is education? But then we really dig deep and go from this 50,000 foot view to a pretty granular view to really talk deeply about like, what is a middle school kid doing all day long? And when they get to the cafeteria or, or you know, gym or outside, what are those opportunities that they could have to just take a breath, as I've said before? So we've had conversations about that. When we have conversations with pre-K, 
uh, later this week, one of the things I want to unpack is like truly what could that day-to-day experience look like for a middle school kid to work with a, a pre-K student or the child studies program. When high school kids come back down to the middle school um, to work with those pre-K students, is it better for pre-K to be in a building that's attached to the middle school? Is it better for pre-K to be its standalone building where the pros and cons? So we go really deep into those conversations educationally and programmatically because then it helps the design of the building. Does that answer? It does. Is that a long, really long-winded answer? For you? <laughs> sorry, I got very passionate, so I can talk about this all the long. Any other questions? So how's it going so far? You know, you started up there and you're kind of funneling down. How's the how's the progress been are you starting to you know, starting to formulate what it's gonna look like? I guess I, I think it's been really positive. I think it's it's not easy for a few reasons. Um, you know, one being that we're in the middle of building an implementation plan and setting a vision for the entire district. So we're, you know, preschool through 12th grade. So we're kind of overlaying this process and kind of where we are in terms of thinking around both Pierce as an entity and then thinking about five, six, seven, eight. So uh, I think it's helping us in our thinking to, to kind of apply what we've, what I've learned definitely in um, over the year that's kind of explicated in the priority report um, and applying that to to thinking about what this building looks like. I mean, we have questions that we need to answer around even how many students we, we think we're going to be having in 10, 20, 30, 40 years, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, ultimately, we don't want to be in a position down the road where, you know, we run out of space in 20 years. Um, so specifically, how many teams, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we could build for three teams, four teams, but that, that's a, a decision we have to make. So there are, um, I mean, just being part of this process, the new buildings are beautiful and being able to tour a few new buildings. And I've had the chance in other states to do this too. And, you know, we have, we have really nice buildings. I think overall, when people come to Milton, they're impressed by the buildings because we went through this process in 2002, three, four, five. Um, but they're still very traditional design and newly designed school buildings have like way, way more light, uh, more collaborative space. They, they respond to kind of what we know about humans, not just students, but humans now in a way that I I think is, it's inspiring and it feels different to be in those spaces. And, and you know, that students come into those spaces feel different too. So I think there's a lot of, there's been a lot of excitement from people that joined this kind of planning group thinking, yeah, okay, I'll do it, but I have to get a sub and, you know, Mm -hmm. I've got a lot going on. And I think a lot of those people have been co-opted into the excitement pretty quickly. I think that the powerful thing about this is that, because I was an educator and I have been through many projects on the other side as an educator, I know it's, you go through this visioning process as an isolated event, but then there's this whole piece of the implementation of the priority report and the work that the district is already just doing outside of the project. So to me, the most successful thing that we can do is to try to be a branch of the work that's already going on. So that way, as this building is designed and these conversations continue, that it's no different than the educational conversations that would be had to implement the work that the superintendent's already trying to do. You know, Mm -hmm. the building, it would allow the building to be even more flexible. And I think it's just pushing the educators to have conversations that ultimately they'll have to have if they start to teach in a way that's reflective of the building. You said as part of your uh, visioning effort, you know, you'd introduced concepts from other uh, school building projects. I, and I think you said both locally, uh, some of which you get to visit, and then also internationally. Mm-hmm. Did any of those international concepts stick at all? Because, I mean, 
number one, this district has a lot of international students, and number two, it has a lot of aspiring international students. So I didn't know if any of those kind of foreign concepts are sticking at all. Well, it's interesting. They're not the edu- the teaching and learning that's happening is a is more of a foreign piece. So the building aside, the actual work that teachers are doing inside of the buildings internationally, there's a lot of countries that are, I would say, much farther than the United States in terms of their thinking outside the box and how to work with students. And maybe that's some of what's being overlain because that's less of our purview. And I'm thinking more of the physical building project. But that, but the second part of my answer is that yes. So the, this idea of having small group spaces or breakout spaces that are attached to teams or the idea of having this really blurred line between what's outside and what's inside. For example, in the pre-K session on Thursday, I'm going to show pictures of this early childhood school in Australia where the inside of this collection of pre-K rooms, it's like an indoor, I mean, it almost looks like an indoor theme park because it's so beyond what we would typically see as a hallway. It's not what we're advocating for. No, (laughs) but, you know, it has tricycles and fine and gross motor activities happening in this space, things that you would normally see in every single teacher's room siloed as an individual experience or outside in a sand pit. But it blurs the line and says, if kids are already doing this all day long, how do we bring this together inside these dramatic play sets that take up so much space in every teacher's room and that cost so much money? Why not bring some of that into the center and allow this community of learners to use it because then kids are working on those fine and gross motor skills all day long. If kid is receiving, if the kid is receiving occupational therapy services, they could even do it there riding a tricycle and nobody's going to know that they're any different. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that is probably going to blow educators minds when they see that picture, but it's happening. Like it's happening in a lot of schools. So I'm glad you asked it though. That's an interesting question. I asked the same question just about what, you know, what's happening internationally in terms of classroom design as a whole. Like what what are some of the kind of cutting edge places that that different countries are are yeah. moving towards? So. So for, for some of you that have been on this for a long time, if you recall way back when uh, we reached out to uh, a different architect to come in and do a presentation of like how classrooms have changed and stuff like that. So you know, it was Mark Slater, it was before you guys, I think it was actually even before COVID when we did it, <clears throat> but we had, you know, saw a presentation by the uh, local architect, not to be named, but the, um, <laughs> they, they were doing some work. I saw their presentation from watching another one. It was basically eye-opening, where it's, you know, the classroom and the interior of buildings right now for educational spaces doesn't look the same. You know, I mean, I went to a cat Catholic school my entire life, rows of desks, you know, none up there. There would be your knuckles and stuff like that. Um, and seeing how everything looks now totally differently is was eye-opening. It was great. So yeah, I'm actually looking forward to see what that presentation looks like too. And I, I was thinking also of the early childhood spaces, and I just went to a, uh, an organization that focuses on working with homeless children. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the space itself is in a very um, busy area, so it's not like you have a lot of green space. But the way they were able to incorporate green space mm-hmm. within the building uh, was amazing. Mm-hmm. And to bring sort of the outdoor space, uh, play space indoors mm-hmm. so that kids can continue to have an area where they're moving and they're mm-hmm. doing. And then also thinking about um, even the outdoor space as an extension of the classroom and not just for the sake of, you know, play, outdoor. but right. really thinking about exploration and how that can be different than your typical uh, play, play space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of opportunity there. Yeah. And in urban areas, it's really fascinating how they create green space, even not just on the ground level, but many schools 
we were working on an elementary project together and we've gone to a number of schools even in new england that have green spaces on rooftops right outside of media centers it's powerful mm -hmm. any other questions comments what is the um, mm -hmm. space that you visited uh it's horizon for homeless children mm -hmm. cool Okay. Yeah, they also have a stem lab for little. Oh, yeah. really, really stack. Stack. Hmm? Um, do you want your stack? That's you know, I have it right okay. here on the screen. I can. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's see. Go ahead. Keep going. Um, Larry, do you want me to go through the schedule, or would you like to? Yeah, no, go no, ahead. No. Okay. So, uh, just to you know, update on where we are. Um, I think you've seen a version of this before, yep. um, where we had the project kickoff and we're. You know, we went through, um, we described sort of what the process is to completion. And in this next page, I just blew up the first part that will get us to town um, meeting. So one one thing I noticed on this is previously the pricing was a lot prior to that. There were two cost estimates that were being done. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? That's one of the ones we'll, we'll need to talk about in kind of upcoming meetings. Sure. I, I don't know if you want to address that now, Larry, or... Well, um, so let's see, if we start at the moment, mm -hmm. so here we are in sort of mid-May. Um, what we're going to start to do, so we just finished the last round with the middle school folks last week, and um, we're going to try and button up things in terms of just the conversations with the key things. This yep. week um, is starting to draw. And so our goal is in about a month's time, so more or less in June, mm -hmm. Um, having some concept studies for you guys to say, okay, which way are we headed with this building? Yep. Sort of general purpose studies. Um, mm -hmm. um, goal being that if everybody is comfortable with one uh, of the ideas from a scheme, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, whether by sort of mid June, end of June, then we would spend the next two months um, developing that further in schematic design. Yep. Um, and then basically turning that into enough of a building concept that we could get some pricing. Yep. And I think we're open to whatever makes sense in terms of pricing that makes sense for this group, knowing you know it takes usually two weeks to three weeks to get pricing back. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, I don't think we want us to be in a situation where we're stopped, pencils down, and some of these prices are going to I'm not sure we have that luxury. Yep. Um, but we could, if it's helpful, try and talk through some initial pricing ideas as we look at the options. Yep. Usually what we do. Um, and more, it's more comparative than it is saying, okay, but this is what your building's going to cost. Um, but in terms of, you know, where it is a, Two-story building or a two-story building or two separate buildings or one big building, you know, how do we compare those costs? And I'm like kind of working into that, not a, not a the idea of a pencils down, but are you thinking like a something like an 80% SD estimate? Well, it's uh, at some point along the lines, yeah. So I was, I, I've just been operating under the previous you know slides mm -hmm. that were there in the presentation. Now, obviously, I know. Things slid a little bit, you know, due to scheduling conflicts and stuff yeah. like that. You know, part part of me is, you know, for what we'll be doing is, you know, from rough order of magnitude, uh, how we've done it previously, you know, leading up to this before we can bring you guys on was just square footage costs. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I'm assuming when we have a site a concept selection in June, there'll be an associated square footage to that that we can apply numbers to. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I think uh, to your point, we're happy to talk about. Um, Doing an estimate, uh, I could say, if they, some drawings in August mm -hmm. that somebody spends a couple of weeks pricing, and if that gives you a better sense of where things are, uh, it's like that they would get all the way through a set of drawings and then pricing. Yep. So I think we can put them for that through if we can. That's fine. I think that's reasonable. So we're kicking off the site. Uh, not sorry, site traffic studies working with um, MDM mm -hmm. and currently in the middle of developing um, some 
block diagrams that you'll be seeing in the next couple of weeks and adjacencies as we wrap up these conversations with pre-K and then do the middle school summary workshop. We are still, you know, got to develop some of that information coming out of those meetings and then we'll be able to present some block and adjacency diagrams that show you how we're translating some of these sort of philosophical notions into like diagrammatic plan layouts mm -hmm. so that you'll understand sort of what the scale of the first floor primarily is. And then we'll be then translating that into massing. So you can see how big, how many stories, mm -hmm. what is the relationship of the classroom wing to the gym, to the media, to the cafe sorts of things. Yep. And then of course, what does it mean for the relationship to the pre-K and what does that mean philosophically? And what does that mean architecturally? So those are all things that were expected to start developing and seeing and putting in front of you between now and the middle to the end of June, where we can then start making some hard decisions about the design so yep. we can lead into schematic. So if I could just ask too, sorry, on, on the options, do you have an anticipated number that we're going to be looking at? Is it two? Is it three? Of the number of options? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That is really hard to predict. <laughs> um, uh, we are, but let's just say use June 15th as sort sure. of the date. We would obviously have two options. Yep. There might be a third. Okay. Um, I don't. Yeah, what's interesting is, so yeah. you know, the enrollments, say, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes with NSBA, you're looking at different enrollments, configurations, sites, and renovations. Yeah, and yeah, and yep. And all of that is off the table. We have one site, we have new construction. We have, I think, a fixed enrollment. Maybe that plus or minus kind of fixed, but um it's not like really so it's sort of interesting that i so i think that um for me one of the main options is is two separate programs yep uh, and then there it's more driven by the yeah. issues or the circulation traffic and kind of thing more so necessarily than the, the curriculum or studies okay So then just jumping to a deeper uh, look ahead schedule for us to uh, the middle of June. So as Mike said, we're going to look at having this, we've already scheduled this pre-K programming meeting for this week. Um, the survey field work is starting on May 16th and it's going to run to the 24th. They are going to need at least a week and a half to two weeks to convert that field work into a CAD survey. So we're expecting that survey by June 14th. We're gonna have a final ed programming meeting sometime in May to sort of wrap up the space adjacency review to talk about some of these block diagram adjacencies to make sure that we've incorporated or understood all of the needs from the working group. Um, and then simultaneously, we're working with the geotech consultant to get the drillers mm -hmm. confirmed and on the schedule. Um, that's still pending, but we're expecting it somewhere around June 1st to be confirmed. So and then, just, just on that one, so with parks, we need to plan layout, showing yeah. them exactly. And we'll, we'll, we'll have that, so yeah. just need to yep. on yeah. Okay. Uh, if you need me to send it directly to you as well, I'm happy to. No, no, it okay. just it was just it came out of our last meeting. So yeah, I'll yeah. talk with Alice. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Um, and then as Mike said, we're having some school tours coming up on the 24th. And then as we head into June, uh, we're looking to have the questions that Mike sent out completed by June 1st. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be the basis of this ed um ed plan that's gonna help us, the architects, lay out the floor plans, the dot block diagrams and the adjacencies. So we're looking at the middle of the end of June to have these concepts to put in front of you and the working group to you know, react to them, to tell us you know, what your thoughts are, um, if there's you know, shifts and changes. But this is just really an understanding of where are we going philosophically with the plans. And once you give us direction on which one mm -hmm. we will take that and keep iterating on it, incorporating more detailed feedback to get us to schematic and pricing. With the, with the end of the school year coming up in June, is there a date we should be working towards to present this to the working group? 
I have a date internally that we've been using just because we backtracked it from November 1st, but I do think we need to know from you, mm -hmm. how does that work? You know, we've been arbitrarily saying June 15, mm -hmm. and that's sort of part of what today's goal discussion mm -hmm. is, is to understand from you, is that a workable date? Uh, it's the last week of school. Yeah, so that might be a lot. You know, people finishing up classes, I don't know, like, I think we need we need direction from you on that. Yeah. So the, the presentation of the options, are, you'll be presenting at school building committee, not, or, or are, we, are you presenting it to the uh, district leadership team? Good question. Mm -hmm. I, um, I guess sort of assuming it would be this group. Right. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the working group that you've been meeting with the whole time for us. I don't know. You know, I think that's for you. I, mean, I would think it would be both. It would be iterative, probably. Yeah. I guess I would bring it to the working group who's been designing it to get an initial first blush and then bring it to this group after. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, we should bring it. I want to lay that with this little count. I mean, I was just thinking this school meets once a month, right? Every two weeks. Every two weeks. Yeah. Um, so we can meet in two weeks and show some drafts. So do you have a I'll give it to Memorial Day. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Monday's Memorial Day. Should we meet that Tuesday or? Uh, Probably. I mean, we get to that point on the yeah. on the agenda okay. for next okay. meeting. We can figure mm -hmm. it out. But yes, it won't be that Monday. Okay. Or should we try to attend the working group session? What I don't know when that. Usually during the days. Correct. So they, they do it during the day, and I'm not sure we'll be able to get every like to, 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 to coordinate to coordinate both schedules on top of each other might might be too much. Do we want to talk about scheduling right now, or we're waiting until another agenda? We'll wait till the uh, we'll wait till that one. So that's the sort of deeper dive of the next couple weeks that will get us to June. I mean, it's been calling us calling us the road map to June 15th, but, you know, because that's really important. Once we laid this initial groundwork, then after we've made those decisions, we can move pretty quickly. Yeah, I think um, the grading test is at what point do you want to open up to the broader community? Um, sometimes it's just through the school building committee meetings and people are expected to yep. school their changes, but um, oftentimes there's a special community forum or other type it, and that was going to be one of my comments too. Of you know, if you go back a slide to, to the schedule that was there that had you know community discussion kind of lead into September. Yeah, uh, we probably want to as we get these concepts going, you know, integrate some of that community discussion into schematic design. So maybe mm -hmm. one or two meetings early on, specifically with some of the abutters. Um, you know, I mean that that's always been my goal or sure. promise to it. Yeah. That, I think um, our thought was in in the beginning paying attention to. School vacations or vacations. Yeah. Is it for instance? I don't think we want to hold too many community meetings in August. Correct. It's going to be tough, but mm -hmm. you know, yeah. just running into that and say we're wrapping things up at uh, the end of August or September. I think the, the thing we've been carrying the discussion is going to look at here's the building, here's the cost. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a whole round robin of discussion leading up to your vote. And we're trying to keep an eye that we do give you enough time to even just be saying, oh, we're going to deliver everything the day before the time that mm -hmm. you know that's not going to be helpful. Yep. Okay. We'll keep. So I think that was sort of the end of the scheduling. The last one. And then, you know, I have the second half of the schedule after the time we we'll can talk about that later. Oh. Yeah, yeah, let's get there first. <laughs> Good to June for now. And, okay. And then, so the June 15th, if you just go back one more slide, the thing I saw was, it was, uh, or the forward, sorry. Uh, so draft educational plan, but we're also talking concepts at that time too, right? Yeah, the, the so, adjacency diagrams that yep. reflect at least two philosophical point of views yep. of the education plan. Yep. So I'm just trying to understand what, so we're getting a, a draft educational plan and then also the, the Concepts that are there. Uh, I think they're not going to sound to me. So I think one mm -hmm. has to come first and then the other. Okay. Um, so can we go back to the schedule just so I can see it, just so okay. I understand? So, so we're saying concept there mid June. So this mm -hmm. is where my confusion is coming yeah. in. So I think um, we're saying that the, the 
interest to the, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. My understanding is that the yeah. answers to this um, sort of these questions that Mike has sent out is, is basically an initial draft of that. Those answers are an initial draft of that yeah. plan. We're going to take those right. answers. Yeah, we're going to take those answers and start really diving into those drawings to start incorporating them. And while they're simultaneously writing a more formal version of it, mm -hmm. we will be continuing to develop those adjacency diagrams so that they're reflective of each other. Yep. So while we are going to get answers up front, I don't think that they're going to be in a digestible format for all of you, but it will be enough for us to continue. And then we'll wrap it up into a package for all of you middle to late June. Okay. And, and so essentially that's the deliverable would be yeah. both the educational package and the adjacency diagrams. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. The, because the goal, we're trying to be responsive to the fact that we're quickly approaching the end of the school year. It's yep. a crazy time for everybody. Yeah. And it, this could be a 60 to 70 page document. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't need to be in full <laughs> form for you know, designers and myself to start laying out blocks and yep. at least getting an overall massing and keeping yep. things to people to respond to. Yeah, I think it's just more, I'll, I'll speak for myself, but everybody else feel free to chime in. It's just more of like, you know, obviously everybody's excited about this, you know, and, and for us, floor plans, you know, massing and stuff like that. Like the, the concepts you guys gave at the pre at the presentation right. were great. So you know, I'm assuming that's the baseline we're starting yeah. with. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we got some work to do in the next four to six years. <laughs> um, and I think when I was working June fifteenth is actually Saturday, so we got our best expected. That's but, fine. Um, if we think of it in terms of meetings, so in two weeks we'll meet and share some options, and another two weeks, which should get us to June tenth, and we're saying, okay, this is where we want to be heading. This group is saying where. Yep. Um, and I think Mike, you're working with the district on the uh, like program keys. You know, I don't know how long that's going to be in the world yeah. coming together. I'm sure you'd like to get it done sooner rather than later because of the impact of the end of school. But there's a, a sort of joint partnership going on. Yeah. Okay. Questions? What do you need from us right now? <laughs> Time, everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fortunately, that's not something we have to get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're working on it. I think that um, it's sort of interesting for the and I think I have been missing two of the meetings because uh, I can't remember the other person that one. But um, last week, uh, working with the team from the district, it was interesting because you're you're trying to figure out long term what the um what does it mean to have a five six school what does it mean to have a seven main school um how does that event translate and prep kids for transition into the high school and also what does it do for the elementary school so i think you're wrestling with some pretty good size issues um in terms of the curriculum and uh, you know i think that's going to take some pulling together so we're happy to Provide plans and thinking and so forth, and it's going to be a bit of an iterative process, I think, in my standpoint. Um, because I, I do think, and we were talking about it, you know, the electives and the expression and things like that. Uh, sometimes we've done it where you don't actually decide what the room is, it's just enough of a generic room that's, you know, this year it can be world language and next year it can be. Uh, something else in the third year after that, it's something else entirely, but mm -hmm. it gives the school flexibility without getting you pinned down too much into saying, well, what exactly is this being done? What's that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? Right. Good. Good. All right. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we just missed 
Uh, so the agenda item six that we were just alluding to future meeting dates. Uh, so next meeting, uh, you know, based on our our schedule or calendar would be on Memorial Day, which we will not be having a meeting then. So um, entertain any dates around that time that may work for people. So knowing others have commitments and stuff like that, school committee, stuff like that. Tuesday is the high school senior awards night. No. So I assume you can't come. And I assume, yeah, no. again, we not come. I so, can go to that event, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's the issue with Tuesday. Okay. But that's the block. Glenn could be here eventually. Is he? He's on, right? Yes. Yeah, Glenn's on. Or Wednesday is open. We don't have a meeting that can be nice. So that could be interesting. Okay. Yeah, I could do Wednesday or Thursday that week person. Wednesday, that's yes. Anybody else? Wednesday? Wednesday. What? Yeah, we do have that. Six to we're talking about after we're seven. Well, I'm going to be. Uh, <laughs> just get in, get out. Yeah, it's 445. There's players. Yeah, so I think tentatively right now, let's hold it for Wednesday. And, you know, we'll, we'll check because there's, there's a couple other uh, attendees that aren't here tonight Glenn Hoffman, Aqua, um, mm -hmm. and just see. And, you know, as long as we can ensure we'll have a quorum. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll aim for that Wednesday. We have a counter invite poll for next Monday. That's what we're not. Yeah, correct. Right. Right. So I just confirmed said Wednesday the 29th. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, we just need to confirm with a couple of the other members. Okay. It's like there's a, the only thing I have on here is MFE board meeting. What time is that? That's at 7.30. Okay. The MHS boosters night is 6 to 7. I think I'm speaking at that, but if, if there's a lot of end of year stuff. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> um, could I suggest, could we lay out the other meetings between now and the 15th? Just make sure we have enough on the schedule mm -hmm. for their purposes. Mm -hmm. So just based on the schedule, then we'd have one more on the 10th. So, it, you know, I don't know if people want to move it and have a couple, you know, the yeah, I'm trying to think. Well, I have an invitation for June third. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, we had to cancel last the last meeting because of town meeting, and so it screwed up our my my we weekly, other, um, my drive to fix that tomorrow. I don't like that. I can't explain. <laughs> I just don't know if enough is going to happen between the 29th or the third. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the, the other point. Should we just move everything to the third? That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. that. Instead of having it the week more, they just move it another week. That one I can attend. Well, that gives y'all a touch point soon enough to progress things before the 17th, if like that's the June 15th. That's yeah. Can we make part of our on the scheduling? So sorry, we're, we're suggesting to have to be three weeks on the name of the program. And then the next one would be the 17th. So we would be there. Yeah, yeah would be there. to say that more. But in my opinion, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. how many times? Guys, a lot of, a lot of people talking, please. <laughs> so what we're talking about right now is our next meeting to be the third. So... Does that, that work for everybody? Be fine. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm thinking is also um, we should work with the working group at the district to figure out a meeting. So give us some feedback. Um, prior to, let's see, it's already been sometime the week before that might be good. Maybe the week of the 28th. Kind of show up yeah. to the yeah. group where we are before we come to this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Okay. And then that mid June date that we're talking about is aimed for the 17th. We have a little bit of buffer. Yeah. I'm not going to give too much buffer away, but I'm we have that. a little bit. With, yeah, that. We've built it in yeah. um, because we know that it's going to take conversations with multiple groups of people and coordinating that mm -hmm. does take time. We know that we're heading into summer. So I like to have a couple extra days in there. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah